Not for me. You'd have to ask the SID. You'd have to ask the SID.
share. So, guys, remember, lean into the mics a little, and that'll kill the feedback if you start doing something. Congratulations. All right, excited to welcome the Alabama contingent to the stage. Along with Coach Nate Oates, we have Mark Sears, Ryland Griffin, and Mohamed Diabate. And we will follow our normal procedure with an opening statement from Coach followed by questions for the student athletes. A couple of the standard reminders, please silence your cell phones. Um, provide your name and media affiliation when you ask a question. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Um, when you're finished with your question, if you give the microphone back to the mic handler, that would be great. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We'll address those questions in the room first and get to Zoom as time allows. And please remember not to record press conferences in this area on cell phones or cameras you'll be able to download audio and video and transcripts from ASAP as soon as this is complete. Coach? Uh, character win, I think. You know, we uh, had a chance, could have folded it. A lot of things didn't go our way. You know, a lot of foul trouble. They lived at the free throw line. Our guys started to show a little frustration. I thought we, we pulled it together and showed a lot of mental toughness. And we've been using the word next a lot lately, next play, just go to the next play. Like, forget about the call that didn't go your way, forget about the turnover, forget about the offensive possession where you missed or your teammate missed you. It doesn't matter. Just play hard on defense. It's one of our best you know, defensive games of the year. I mean, you know, we fouled too much. They shot 37 free throws. We obviously benefited from them not shooting it great at the line. But, you know, when we didn't foul, we got pretty good stops. I mean, Ty and Grant Foster's the real deal, but you know, he scored 29, went to the free throw line 16 times and took 22 shots. So I, I thought our guys weren't bad on him. They forced him into a lot of tough shots. You know, Mark, on the other hand, had 26 on 18 shots and only 11 free throws. So, you know, probably a little bit more efficient. But I, I thought our, you know, Ryland did a great job on tying. Mo Diabate came in late and was great on both ends. He scored eight straight points after Jaron fouled out. We, we needed a boost. You know, his boost he gave us right there, defensively and offensively. Ryland's in foul trouble. Jaron's fouled out. Thought he was great. So we're, we're playing next Thursday. 
uh, there's only been 16 left. I think our non-conference schedule got us ready for this. Four teams in the non-conference are all in the Sweet 16. And, you know, we lost all four, but I thought we got better from it. So our defense is getting better as the year goes on. This might have been our best defensive performance of the year. It's been our best for a while. And Wright, Wright's will be able to play with us Thursday. He got elbowed in the head, had a head injury. He's had some real bad luck here lately. But, you know, we're going to be playing again. He can play with us again on Thursday. All right, let's open it up to questions for the student athletes. We'll start right down front. Hey, Nate, uh, Brandon Clearwaters with skyboat.org. Um, we saw number 12 leave to the locker room. Can you give us an update? Let's go to questions for student athletes first and follow protocol. Sorry. Questions for student athletes right here. Uh, James Torman Aldrich with the Argonaut. Rylan, you mentioned your, uh, th you know, the fouls that were called there before Coach got out here. Um, just how you were able to stick in the game for those final four minutes uh, when you were in foul trouble late. <clears throat> um, Mo Diabate was able to guard uh, Tyon Grand Foster, so that helped me from picking up my fifth foul. So just like it, it, it's March, like you need everybody to step up. Like Mo, he probably didn't play as much as he wanted to until the end, but he came in and he was ready. So just being able to have guys like that to be able to help me keep me on the floor, not only just me, but pretty much everybody is just like, it's great. And that's something that coach preaches every single day. Uh, I want to ask about, about kind of that, that final stretch. Mo, you came in, kind of had eight points, and I think eight, eight in a row with the last four minutes or so. Kind of what, I guess, sparked that for you in that final stretch, and kind of did you realize like the magnitude of what that you know run accomplished? Um, I was just playing hard, and I got lost in the game. Honestly, I wasn't thinking about scoring. I just let the game come to me. Um, coach put me in with a few minutes left of the game because Jaren fouled out, and you know I just try to play as hard as I can and let my defense contribute to offense. And that's what I did. Uh, this is a question for any of you guys. You guys were going back and forth with the crowd there late. Um, I know SEC has some great crowds. What did you think of the GCU fans and also the Bama fans kind of going back and forth as well? Mark? Um, I'm saying it, it was fun. You know, that's what basketball is all about, you know, when the fans are going at it. And as a player, you know, that's, it, it's part of the game and we love it. Rylan? Uh, yeah, it's March. Like, um, they had a definite home. They had a, a good crowd. Um, but like I said yesterday, the game is played on the floor. So, you know, just love the atmosphere. You know, it doesn't matter if we got fans for us or against us. Just love the atmosphere. And they were ready to go. As soon as we got on the court, they were out there. So, um, but uh, we just had to make sure we won the game on the floor, not in the stands. Mark, how would you describe what? How would you describe what Mo provided for you guys that last five minutes? He won us the game the last five minutes. You know, I think he had a stretch of like eight straight points or something like that, and he got old boards and he did it on both sides of the floor. We don't win this game without him. I asked Mark um, Richard Obert, Arizona Republic. Asked Mark about. Grand Canyon only made two of 23 pointers. What were you guys doing on the perimeter to try to get them off their mark? And then they just seemed to, I don't know if they were tight or you guys were doing a great job defending the perimeter. I said we, we did a great job of defending the perimeter, but we also tried to be in the gaps because we know, we know um, uh, number seven is a great player and we, we wanted him to make him pass the ball and uh, they really didn't excel in that area. Uh, Julie Mitchell, WBTM 13 in Birmingham, back here, sorry. Um, this is for, for each of you. Uh, over the last couple of days, you all talked about how you all have come together, how tight this group is. Uh, your brother in Wrightsville goes down. How'd you all rally around him and go in a survive in advance here? Mark, let's start with you and then go that way. Can you say that again? Yes, uh, you've talked about over the last couple of days, this team has really come together and been so close. Uh, your brother goes down in, in Wrightsville Jr. there. How did you all rally around him and get this hard earned win? Uh, we uh, Once we came in at halftime, he was right there dapping us up. And, you know, when we was in the locker room, we was like, we're going to win this game for him so we could play on Thursday. And that's what we did. Uh, Rylan? Um, for me, like, Charlie, like, that's my brother for real. So <clears throat> just, you know, he came from the West Coast. Um, that's where he was at last year. So he got some friends and family out there. Um, so, you know, I came in and, in the team and I like I was like, there's no way that was Charlie's last game for the season. So. 
you know, just made sure we had to get the. For me personally, I just want. I know he wants to play. I know he didn't want to get hurt today. Um, he gave, he went out there and gave everything for us for the time he did play. So I was just like, let's make sure we make sure Trelly has a chance to play again for us this well, season. Mohammed, um, we play for each other every game. Um, we know how much Trelly, you know, wanted to play in LA, and so we seen how hurt he was once he went out the game. So we just try to um, do everything we can for him. All right, that's all the time we have for student athletes, so we'll dismiss them and come back to questions for coach when they've cleared the stage. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Seven? Seven. Three minutes. Three minutes. All right, questions for Coach Oates. Once again, Nate, Brandon uh, from skyboat.org. Can you give us an update on uh, player number 12? Yeah, Latrell Rachel's got a head injury. But, so he, he couldn't play in the second half. On the aisle. Coach, you kind of mentioned it was kind of your, your best defensive performance of the season. That final four minutes, you guys didn't allow a single point. What, I guess, happened in that stretch that, I guess, maybe sparked that run defensively? I didn't, didn't realize they didn't score in the final four minutes. I knew, what, what, what did we get down? We were down th three, four. We got down four at one point. Yeah, I think our guys, well, one, Mo Diabate came in. And, you know, I'm looking right now on our defensive chart. Like, we were .64 on defense when he was in the game. You know, you look at his regular stat line in 12 minutes, he had five old boards, nine points, was a .64 on defense. He's just a tough player, and he's never afraid of the moment. He just does all the dirty work all year. I'm super happy that he was able to come in and like really help close this thing out for us. So I thought Nick Pringle's play was as good as he's been all year. I mean, he didn't necessarily score it a bunch, but you know, he had nine rebounds, four old boards. Debate had five old boards. You know, we ended up with 20 old boards on them. They, they were big plays. Both of them, when they're getting old boards, you know, Mo Diabati, who's not a great free throw shooter, goes three of three. So I thought Nick and Mo really helped set the tone. And then this is as good a defense as Mark Sears has played all year. First double double of the year. You know, he had 26 and 12. I mean, he played so much, he was cramping there at the end. I didn't feel like I could take him out much with Reitzel not available in the second half. But we were 0.79 when he was in the game. So. Uh, he he was really locking up and leading and talking to guys and getting them to play hard. So I think you had a group in there with Sears, Rylan, Aaron. Aaron's been really good defender all year. Mo Diabate and Nick Pringle that it was all about getting stops and then taking care of the ball. And then we were able to step up to free throw line, make some free throws. Coach Michael Bethley with the Black Lens here in Spokane. Um, you talked about how character won you the game. Can you just explain how important attitude is going into big games like this before, doing, and after the game? Listen, I, I thought our attitude was good coming in. We were focused on the right things. And, you know, you heard Mo just talk about losing himself in the game. Like, focus on making the tough, blue collar, defensive minded, the old boards, great screen assists. Focus on that. The offense will come. Our offense is one of our worst offensive games. You've got to give Grand Canyon a lot of credit, too. They got great athletes. They got rim protection. They made it harder on us. You know, so they're a good defensive team, but we just missed some shots, too. Some guys missed some free throws, maybe. So I thought, you know, when we got a lead, we didn't do a great job extending it like we could have. They took the lead, and we could have folded easy. And I, there was a time when I got the whole team, like, we just we got to change our energy. So attitude during the game, you know, it's basketball. There's going to be tough calls. I mean, just tons of marginal calls. Some go against you, some go for you. You can't live and die on every call that goes against you. I thought, our, you know, our guys did a pretty good job. Some calls that were marginal that they got, you know, and they, we had calls that were marginal that we got. Like, but our guys did a better job tonight, just moved to the next play. Whether it was a, you know, missed layup on their own, a turnover on their own, a, a, a call that didn't go our way, like we were able to just next play, next play, we get, you know, we get down. They got great crowd here. Uh, shoot, they're, they're whatever their administration, their schools doing to get the crowd. I, I played once there, 
when I was an assistant at Buffalo a long time ago. They had a great crowd then. I think it's much better now. But, you know, it was there they had a lot of people here. That thing got loud when they got the lead, and then our guys just hung in there and got stops. And just the whole attitude of we got, got to get a stop and move to the next play was big. Nate, I, I know you're in foul trouble and you don't have Latrell, but what was the thought of going to Mo in that in that situation there with like five, six minutes to go? And as you're watching him contribute that way offensively, you're like, where's this been all season kind of thing? Or, or you know, how, how were you looking at that? He's been a tough player all year. You know, he's struggled sometimes on offense to grab some of the concepts. And he's you know, he even said it happened in high school. It took him a little while to get familiar with his system. And then he ended up being NEPSAC player of the year, which is a really good league. So I, we knew we knew we needed some tough plays. We also knew they give up a lot of threes. So you know, analytically thinking, we need some three-point shooters in. Sam Walters, Griffin, Sears, Estrada. Mo doesn't really fit that bill, but man, we were lacking some toughness there. And let, let's put a guy in that's going to make some tough plays and shoot. He played 12 minutes, had five old boards. Thought Pringle made some really good reads in the pocket. You know, Sears hit. Pringle, great. Mo cuts, scores, got to the old boards. And he just made some stuff happen. I, and I'm super happy for him. I mean, he's like, as literally had the greatest attitude. Even, I mean, NEPSAC, NEPSAC player of the year doesn't play a ton as a freshman. Some games he doesn't play at all. And never had one second of any kind of poor attitude. He's just been an unbelievable kid all year. So super happy he came in and won this game for us. We have time for two more questions for Coach. We'll go right here and then right here. Coach D. Jackson, CBS 42 in Birmingham. Uh, you, your theme is blue collar basketball. And this game in particular, what were your thoughts on how physical and how emotional this game played out for your team? Yeah, we let our emotions get the best of us, and myself included, with the T that didn't help. And then Pringle got the T. We said at halftime, like, we're not giving away any more free points. So you got to be emotionally invested in the game without doing things that cost you points and stuff. So uh, th that way, we were, we were good. I thought our bench was great. We went a little over the line a couple times. But as far as the blue collar stuff, like we chart blue collar points both ways. Like this game, we had 115, and we had them with like 95. So we had 20 more than them. Uh, like this is almost a season high for us with 115 blue collar points. And, and you kind of look like, you know, Aaron Estrada rebounded it great. He ended up leading us. You know, he had diving on the floor for loose balls. Uh, it, he made a bunch of tough plays, but Sears was over 20. Nick Pringle was over 20. You know, we had multiple guys in there putting their nose in, making tough plays. You know, Sears has a double-double. Sears, Sears wasn't going to lose. He wasn't letting us lose tonight. And a lot of that was how blue-collar and tough. And, you know, he, he was great on defense. I thought it was best defensive game. So we kind of get to – we lead the country in scoring. We play fast. Our offense has been number one in the country for a large part of the year, but we really try to build the program on toughness, blue collar, and it hasn't been what we'd like to see all the year. It was there tonight. Without it, we don't win tonight. Last question. Nate, in your opener, you mentioned the 37 free throws. Do you think that was more of a matter of you guys being too physical at times, or maybe some whistles that you didn't think were fouls? Probably a little both. I mean, look, to be honest with you, you know, we, we fouled two three-point shooters. That gave them six. I, I looked at them. We, we fouled them. Those were correct calls. So we got two tees. That's another four. So take 10 off, and all of a sudden it's 37 or 27, 22, and it's not nearly as big a discrepancy. So we, we've got to do a better job not fouling jump shooters. Sears fouled a jump shooter. You know, they got eight free throws off jump shooters and four off tees. Like, don't foul jump shooters. Don't do stupid things to get tees, and you know, take those twelve away, and it's pretty even. So, I, I, they were physical. We were physical. If it had been 25-22, nobody would talk, be talking about it. We got to do a better job, not putting them to the line on, on plays that we should be putting them to the line, like three-point shots and jumpers. All right. Thank you, Coach.
All right, we well, welcome Grand Canyon University congregation to the stage. We have uh, student athletes Tyon, Grant Foster, and Gabe McLaughlin, along with Coach Drew. We'll follow our normal, uh, normal format of a quick opening statement from Coach, followed by questions for the student athletes, and then return to Coach for questions. We'll uh, make our usual reminders as a courtesy, please silence your cell phone. When you ask a question, please give your name and media affiliation each time. Uh, to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function. We'll get to you if time allows. Please remember no recording press conferences on cell phones and cameras in this area. You can download the audio and video uh, once the session is completed. And if you direct questions to a specific student athlete, that is helpful. And, and uh, as a reminder, again, please state your name and media affiliation as you ask questions. Coach? Yeah, never fun to talk after a loss. Um, man, th th these guys are fighters, though. And um, if you'd have told me before the game, we're going to shoot 10% from three, 32 from the field, and 62 from the free throw line, and be up you know, with six minutes left, um, there's no way I'd have believed you. Um, the fight of these guys, the will, the togetherness, the no quit in them um, was really fun to be part of. Uh, we talked about sometimes the ball doesn't go in, sometimes the rebound doesn't bounce your way, but uh, your effort can be you know, uh, outstanding and, and, and tough every possession, and that's what they did. And so hate losing, uh, especially a game that if we'd have made some shots, made some free throws, rebound a little better, you know, we easily could have turned the outcome, uh, but not going to take away anything from these guys, what they achieved all year. And, um, and the fight that they had uh, tonight in this game. Questions for Tyon and Gabe. We'll start right here. Uh, James Torman Aldrich with the Argonaut. Gabe, after the, the last game, Coach really called you that spiritual leader on the team. And what does it kind of look like to continue being that leader after that big win and now after a tough loss? Um, you know, uh, our God is, is way bigger than just a basketball game. And so, uh, you know, we lost the game, but I mean, I gained 14 other brothers in the, in the midst of it all. And just looking at where, um, you know, God has led us through it all. Um, you know, being able to, you know, carry this every single game and, and rely on it. I mean, I know these guys started picking up their own Bibles too. And so just saying that they're more than just basketball players. Your identity is way bigger than just basketball and your identity is in Christ. And so um, I'm proud of these guys, you know, having open hearts and being able to, you know, take the word and, and live it out themselves. And so uh, it's just a message of just like, you're, you're, you're more than just a basketball player. Like God has built you and uh, uniquely um, designed you to be who you are. And you have so many gifts that, uh, you know, he will utilize for your purpose later on in life. Uh, Rishi Oza, Cronkite Sports, this question is for both of you guys. So what are you guys going to take from your time at Grand Canyon over the past couple of years for you, Gabe, and then over this year for you, Tyon? Gabe, let's start with you. Um, just really the community, you know. Uh, I would not be the man I am today. I wouldn't be the man of faith that I am today without uh, the GCU community, um, without Coach Drew, without brothers like Tyon and everyone else on the team. I mean, uh, even though, you know, I gave – a lot, it seems like I was just, you know, the spiritual leader or whatever, like really I was getting poured into the whole time by just the GCU community as a whole. And so I'm just so blessed to have been a part of it and, um, you know, to be eloped for life basically. And um, yeah, I couldn't be more grateful and uh, yeah, just blessed. Diane? Um, I'm gonna take, like Gabe said, I gained 14 of the brothers, man. And, and that's just going, they gonna ride for me for life, just like I'm gonna ride for them. So I'm gonna take that from this experience. For both of you, we we know about the Havocs, but just to see that support 1,400 miles away from home and have it feel like a home game on a weekend in March, what did that mean for you to look up and see that support, the standing ovation as you left the court? Tyon? Oh, it meant everything to me, really, just the support. And the care that they have for us is, is like unwavering. Like no matter where we at, they're gonna find a way to get there. So like, I love that so much. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, it goes to show for the program and, and just the school. I mean, after a loss, you know, everyone's of course disappointed, but you look up into the stands and you just see, you know, giant like lopes up or hearts, um, you know, coming out from the, from the stands. And it just means more um, to me knowing that even though 
fortunately, I feel like I let them down, that they're always going to be like, you know, at your lope, and then, uh, you know, always have that love for you. And so, um, yeah. Reminder to please identify yourself before each question. Tim Booth from the AP. Um, not to ask, linger on something game related, but you guys are down 10 early in the second half. You come back to take the lead, and then you can't really, you didn't really get anything going the last four or five minutes. What did you guys do really well to come back from that deficit to, to get the lead, and what didn't work for you guys the last four or five minutes? Gabe? Um, you know, just looking at each other at eyes, you know, and just being connected, you know, to see who we're fighting for. We're fighting for each other. And I think that that love that we have for each other is, is a, a bond that can be, you know, is not breakable. And so when we were down 10, you know, being able to come back and fight, uh, it was for each other and just being connected. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the ball just didn't bounce our way towards the end and it got the best of us. But the one thing is, is I can sit here and say that this bond was never broken and that love that we have for each other, the fight was never once tested and, and you know, lost. Tyon? Um, like Gabe said, um, I just feel like the, the connectivity that we had, like that didn't leave the whole game. And we knew we had a chance to win that game. And I, just, I would just say, um, I say we were one rebound away from winning that game. We get one rebound, that, the, the, the game's turned. We, we win that game. So that's the only real thing that I have to say about that, just because we were so connected that like everything that we did, we were doing it for each other. Like nobody was doing something trying to just win the game. Like we all were together. So I feel like we were literally just one rebound away from winning that game. Richard over the Republic, you, you guys, I mean, they took 31 three-pointers and made eight, and I think they had 20 offensive rebounds. Was, was the ball just clanging back out to them? Was it hard to, you know, be able to block out? And because some of those came down the stretch when uh, number 10, I think, had five offensive rebounds. But I know you, you guys fought like heck on, on the glass, but, man, it was uh, just frustrating to see the ball bang out to them. Yep. Yeah, um, the thing about three-point shots, you know, they're long shots. So they have a lot of uh, momentum going towards the rim, which means long rebounds. And uh, sometimes they just, you know, you're boxing out, you're doing what you're supposed to, and it just flies over your head. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what ended up happening. And, you know, we just, you know, can look at those moments and be like, you know what, I got to push them a little bit harder, get them out, box out a little bit better. But, uh, you know, long, long shots equals long rebounds. And I think, um, you know, that's what got us. Um, I would say it was just like a couple plays where we had the ball and like we just lost it sometimes and I just and sometimes that happens but I mean shoot it just I don't, that 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 just happened so I, I don't know I feel like we just didn't had a ball in our hands. We have time for one more question for these student athletes if there is one. Uh, this was one of the best seasons in GCU history for basketball. So what are you guys going to take from it? And what are you guys most proud of uh, over the course of this entire season? Ty Um I would say just the um, the connectiveness that we had. Like, that was one of the main things that coaches preached to us. No matter how, m how many points we were down or anything, we just made sure that we stayed together because we knew if we stayed together that we could do anything. Like I said, we could play with the best of the best in the country. So I would say I'm going to take that from um, this season. Good. Um, I think my joy throughout the season was just seeing uh, my brothers, you know, come to faith a little bit. You know, they, they opened their hearts. They were all believers, but really understanding who Jesus is and what he did for us. Um, that truly was uh, the biggest blessing, you know, being around on this team and uh, seeing, you know, us win the real battles, uh, which is for eternity. You know, I'll see them uh, in heaven one day. And so even though we lost, you know, we won the, the real fight. We won the real victory, uh, you know, what, what this, this life's about. So that's, that's where my joy comes from from this year. All right. We'll say thank you to these two and dismiss them from the stage and then return to questions for Coach. Questions for Coach. Hey, 
Yeah, Coach, I think there at the beginning uh, between both teams, it was three for 21. Um, you know, just kind of how you guys, after that media timeout, started to get rolling again. Yeah, you know, uh, we struggled in half court uh, offense. I think their length and speed gave us a lot of problems. Um, some of our shots, I thought we had really good looks. Uh, we just didn't make them. thought they had some good looks to start the game, just didn't make them. And I think it just was the energy in the building and just the excitement of the game, knowing what's at stake. Um, but I thought both teams, you know, really competed. Um, you know, that was, that was a fight for 40 minutes with teams really going at each other. Tim Booth from the AP. Bri or Bryce, um, I guess same question I asked them. What, what did you see the last five minutes? You guys kind of got stagnant offensively, didn't score the last. 440, kind of what did you feel like happened there? Yeah, I mean, the shift came when we were up three and they had a five point possession. Um, our inability to get two rebounds off missed free throws. And that really shifted the momentum. I think it was deflating for our guys in a way. We were on such a good run and build a three point lead. And that's what Tyon was referring to. If we rebound that first free throw, we have the ball up two, we score, go up four. All of a sudden, that whole dynamic changes, you know, the last five minutes. So, um, we saw we brought Gabe and Ray back in with four fouls. And, um, you know, credit Sears. You know, Sears, I thought he willed them to win. Um, defensively, he was terrific. Scored it, rebounded it. And um, he just willed his team all night, I think, especially those last five minutes. Hi, Coach. Jaden Barfish from the Argonaut. Um, Al, Alabama, out rebounded you guys by nine. Talk about kind of that impact that had on the game? Um, huge. You know, the offensive rebounds in the last six minutes uh, cost us the game, you know, won the game for them. And, um, you know, long shots, like Gabe said, long rebounds. They were just quicker to the ball on the long rebounds. And then the free throw box outs, I'll have to go back and watch the film and see, you know, if it was just a tip or we missed the coverage. Uh, but the offensive rebounds, you know, were the most uh, – um, you know, probably the biggest difference in the game, even despite our shooting. If we rebound, you know, I think the last five minutes goes different. Losing Luke War, I think with five minutes left, fouled out. How big was that? Because I think he only played seven minutes in the first half with three fouls. I mean, he's, if not your best interior defender, one of your best. What, how did that impact it? Yeah, it really hurt our offense. Uh, we've been so good in this last month and a half with – with, uh, with Luke and Gabe on the floor together. And so our inability to put them on the court for a long stretch of time, you know, really hurt. Um, just our offensively, I think we would have scored a lot better if he could have played more minutes out there. Reminder to please identify yourself. It helps with the transcription. Thanks. Uh, Rishi has a Crockett sport. So I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked them. This is your best season at the helm uh, at GCU. So what are you most proud of of the season? What's kind of the main thing you're going to take away from it? Yeah, you know, we're really thankful. Thankful for uh, to be able to coach. You know, thank you for uh, our school. Um, thank you for the players that we had. It's been a blessing all year. You know, we've beat two ranked teams for the first time in school history. We've been undefeated at home. Um, you know, 30 wins, second round of the NCAA tournament. Um, so much to be proud of for these guys. And, um, you know, what I'm really proud of, I think, is, is tonight what, what we got to ex experience and see our team. Couldn't make a shot, didn't rebound great, um, but the guys never quit. And they, they battled and they fought and they found ways to stay in the game and manufacture points. And, you know, there's so much um, similarities with life and basketball. And, and, and they survived out there. They fought out there. They didn't quit out there. And those are characteristics they'll take with them beyond GCU, you know, with their families and life. So I'm um, just so proud of their effort and, uh, and all they gave for us uh, tonight and all season. Lena Washington, 12 News Phoenix. Just to hear Gabe speak with such eloquence, and you mentioned him being the spiritual leader, what kind of impact and legacy has he left for the program moving forward? Yeah, you know, in the locker room, we, we have a mix of transfers, first years, you know, guys that have, you know, given their all for us this year. But, you know, Javon and Gabe were here at the very beginning. Um, you know, we talked about Javon being here when we were 312th, I think, in the country. And he didn't know anyone on, on our staff. He decided to stay at GCU, and he's been part of this, you know, going now into hopefully, you know, our net's going to end in the top 40s. Um, and then Gabe, same thing. He was here day one that we got here, and he could have left and gone somewhere else. So those two, there's kind of a special feeling towards because 
they, they've just seen this whole thing transform over the last four years to be where we're at. So it's hard looking at those guys. Um, it'll be harder later when we see them, but I think their legacy, you know, they helped lay the foundation for our program for the future. More questions for Coach? All right, thank you, Coach.